No, you can acknowledge that you don't like how you feel. And you can acknowledge that you don't like to spend a lot of time. And that's okay to acknowledge that about yourself. But at the same time, you got to accept it for what it is. Otherwise, you're not going to see everything it wants to show you. And the fastest way to transform it is not to get rid of the signal, but to get to put gas in the car. Then the signal will turn off. Um, I don't know <clears throat> how to um, describe my question, um, and I feel a bit stupid about it. Great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, and I have to cry the whole time. Sure, so I definitely feel stupid. And it feels like a luxury problem. Uh, but when you were talking about um, the desires and um, even changing them a bit, uh, it felt like you were talking to me. And it's a uh, yeah, still. Um, I um, of course one one of my desires is to work less or less hard anyway anyhow. And um, now I'm having a holiday for three days and I'm crying for three whole days. So I thought, yes, I'm going to listen to it. Uh, so yes, I'm crying for three whole days in my holiday. Um, for some reasons we could not um, go on a holiday. And it was just today that I realized um, I'm crying like this eight year old child. Um, in my childhood, we never had money. Um, we never went on holidays. So when everybody left, I stayed at home. Not a big thing, but for me at this moment, it's really a big thing. So um, yeah, I could use some help <laughs> and I know all the stuff. I don't know how to relieve things. It's still, I'm crying for three days. It's so. Well, that's a release, no? Or crying or being the gremlin. <laughs> I switch between those two. <laughs> I'm What's pain in the ass for my family. What does it look like when you shift into the gremlin? Uh, in the gremlin, then I'm uh, very nasty, of course. Start working, start... Uh, uh, nothing is good. All stuff like that. Yeah. Sweet. Really, be, um, really, really not being myself. <laughs> Not being my loving self. Sure. And what do you desire, love? Feel free. I feel free. Yes, and I had. A, I I realized it's just copy paste of my mom. She always worked, and only when the work was done, she uh, took time to relax. But uh, where I live now, <laughs> there's ne there's always work to do. So, and because we are not going on a holiday. I I see work the whole day, and I should be able to handle it. But because of this old stupid issue, I I just don't know how to. I really, I really don't know. It's so stupid. Well, you could start by uh, judging it a little bit less. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Step one. Yeah, or change it to silly. It's better than stupid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can you can acknowledge that something is silly. Like it's silly that I'm doing that. Like it doesn't make much sense from a more objective point of view. You can say mm -hmm. that. But um try not to call it stupid all the time because that's more self-judgment. It's just silly. It's just like no, it's so silly. It, it's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Um <laughs> just shift your focus a little bit at a time. So you have some momentum. You have had a focal point of assumption of belief, a focus that has copy pasted certain ideas, certain patterns, certain assumptions, certain beliefs that has developed a little vortex of attraction for you. Mm -hmm. so from that point of view of your life right now, your life seems to be supporting that idea mm -hmm. that you put into place when you were younger and you continue to elaborate on it as you got older. And now you're kind of reaching a point of readiness and consciousness where you want to 
be more transparent to God, to your calling, to what you're here to be and do, and that freedom, that sense of freedom. So this desire is calling you forth, and therefore you're bumping up against the limitations of your old vortex of attraction or your old belief system. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. So, so that increases, it even though it's the same thing, and maybe you're already freer than you used to be, nevertheless, because your desire is for something else more strongly right now than it used to be, because you're more aware of what's possible. Yeah and who you really are and what you really want. Yeah. Therefore, there's a greater contrast and frustration with what is. And it's greater emotion, right? Greater, greater contrast between your believe in what is versus your desired reality. The more that there is a difference, the more mm -hmm. there will be an emotion showing you that difference, indicating that difference. Mm -hmm. And if the, yeah, if that gets a little overwhelming, you can have uh, tears of release, which is good because it helps you erode away that old belief system. It helps you dissolve that old belief system. So it's good that it is a big deal for you right now. It's a good sign. It's not a stupid sign. It's a silly idea. You can see from your new vantage point that the idea doesn't make a lot of sense. But the fact that you're feeling it so strongly that it's so magnified for you is actually a good sign. It's not a stupid sign. It's a sign of less stupidity and your wisdom and illumination entering your consciousness. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. So first of all, feel good about the degree of emotion that you're having, because it's not personal. Emotion is not personal. Emotion is impersonal. It is objective. Emotions are guidance. Yeah. They, like, you know, they let you know where you wish to be, where you truly stand in truth versus mm -hmm. where your belief system is kind of holding you. That's just an indi indicator. It's like a GPS signal on your uh, phone or like um, a fuel indicator on your car. There's nothing personal about it. But if you start judging it, like, fuck, I'm out of fuel again, like stupid me. Why did I go on so long driving without revealing? Uh, then it, you make it personal. But really, we think emotions are personal. They're the least personal thing in this whole universe. I'll let that settle in for everyone for a second. Your emotions are the least personal component of your experience. We think they're the most personal, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're the least personal because they're mechanical it's a mechanism it's not personal it's a mechanism that responds to your person so what is personal that's to which the emotions respond that is personally created you do not create your emotions your emotions are as mechanical as can be they're the response by the universe you could say but they're responding to your personality or your focal point of self, your focal point of beliefs and ideas and traits and values and beliefs and so forth. So the, the emotions you cannot really alter. Yeah. They are simply reflecting to you where you stand, where you hold yourself as a person, what is personal to you. So <clears throat> I can feel that. Okay. So at this moment, I'm in a situ situation I don't want to be in. That's clear yeah. because my emotions show me. Perfect. <laughs> That's subjective knowledge. You're just <laughs> looking, you're looking at the fuel gauge and it's letting you know something. Perfect. No problem there. No drama, no stupidity. No. The universe is signaling you and you're noticing the signal. That means you're a healthy person. You're a functioning. <laughs> Yeah, and I know. And most of the times I'm capable of handling it, but I'm very stubborn in this pattern, I guess. What do you mean by handling it? Most of the times I'm capable of um, see what I'm doing and then don't do it anymore. <laughs> but at this point, I'm so stubborn. You're saying normally, because right now you're seeing what you're doing as well. But you're yeah. saying 
in most cases, you're more able to just change it when you see it. And right now you're not. Something like that, yes. Okay. And why so is there something I'm missing or is it? Yes. Why do you feel that you are not as easily able to shift this particular focal point or belief? Because, because it's already takes three whole days <laughs> on my holiday. <laughs> Uh, and and I uh, yes I'm on my way. I like the edit okay. pressure you put on yourself because oh shit it's my holiday I don't want to do this process it is holiday let me just yeah. enjoy my holiday give me the emotions when I'm working on my holiday I want to have some fun fuck why yes. is this happening on my holiday? <laughs> my holiday you're right yes you're right but I never want these processes I always want to get rid of them. So most of the times I'm capable of doing it a little more faster and step into the light again than this time. But I, I get I get what you mean, but why do you want to get rid of them? Why would you phrase it in such a way to yourself? Do you know? Yeah, you're right. I asked the question. Yeah, why do I want to get rid of them? Yes. Good question. Why is three days? Why does three days seem like such a long time for you to work on a process? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that long. I mean, it just happens to be your holiday, which I get. Mm. Not your breath. I guess I've been in a process uh, one more time in the process, which took me longer. <laughs> and that was my process of existence. And um, <laughs> Yeah, nowadays, um, perhaps I have judgment on processes. I don't want them anymore. <laughs> perhaps it's something like that, yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, you, can, you can determine to be someone who just shifts easily. That's great. But then if it doesn't happen that easily with certain processes, then mm. it, yes. well, you're a little softer on yourself. You're right. It, okay. It's just That's the baseline. Just accept it a little bit more. Yeah. Otherwise, you feel like you're on some kind of a time crunch and you will miss things. Oh, well, I disappoint myself every time. <laughs> yeah, but you see, if you're too hasty, yeah. because you yeah. judge that it shouldn't take longer than two and a half days, <laughs> then you're like, oh, I got to shift this in the next day and a half or whatever. Otherwise, I reach my three day limit and that's not fun. Yeah. Or it's arising in my holiday, so I should really be over this in like half an hour. Otherwise, I'm ruining my holiday. If you put any kind of hastiness on the process, of course, you're going to miss things. Because you're not going to be objective. You're not going to be genuinely looking for what the emotional guidance system is indicating, is showing you. Yeah. You're, going to, you're going to skip over things out of hastiness and judgment. And then it's going to last longer. <laughs> Slow down to speed up. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So next. Slow, slowing down equals uh, acceptance. Yeah. You cannot fully get all the go golden nuggets and the true transformation yeah. of a situation or, or an experience or a challenge or a process without first accepting the process as a positive thing now you can acknowledge that you don't like how you feel and you can acknowledge that you don't like to spend a lot of time in it. that's okay to acknowledge that about yourself but at the same time you got to accept it for what it is otherwise you're not going to see everything it wants to show you and the fastest way to transform it is not to get rid of the signal but to get to put gas in the car then the signal will turn off Yeah. In order to do that, you've got to understand what is the signal telling me and then make the shift that is most in alignment for you. And yeah. sometimes it takes a little bit more time, my love, to get clear on. So don't call yourself stupid. Don't Not too often. Sometimes it's fun to do it. Like, ah, fuck. But don't do it as often as you just did. Don't put the time crunch pressure on as much as you just did. Ease off of the gas. Check what's going on with the car, with the vehicle, with the body, with the mind. Yeah. So you have clear data. 
So first suggestion to you is to stop rushing. Yeah. Fuck it. Your holidays are screwed already. <laughs> you know, maybe plan something nice for your next holiday. This one is fucked. Accept it. You're going to go back to work tomorrow or whatever day after. Accept it. Like, don't, don't try to like, you know, it, like, it's kind of funny. And this is not entirely to your topic, but we <laughs> we put so much we put so much pressure on our holidays and vacations and stuff yeah. that they become so not fun sometimes and so not fun for everyone around us <laughs> because we have to enjoy the most it is three days if I don't yeah. enjoy this weekend my weekend is fucked and then I have to wait a whole day until I can again <laughs> by forcing myself to enjoy myself right. Every day is a holiday. Every day is an optional day of creation, meaning every day can be anything you want it to be. At the end of the day, truly, we're never really stuck. You could not show up for work and go to Paris. You could. It's not impossible. It might have some consequences, but you could. You're always free. You're always on holiday. What you're doing with your life is, in the end, optional. It's chosen. And we can shift that. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time. It takes a few days, takes a few weeks, takes a few months to make certain changes, to implement them. No big deal, accept it. You're here to learn. You're not here to enjoy yourself all the time. Yes, you're here for enjoyment. You're here for joy, you're here for fun, you're here for play, you're here for creativity, you're here for freedom, but you're also here to learn certain things. And sometimes the most enjoyable thing you can do is to fully accept the lesson that you're giving yourself right now. And to not ignore the lesson that you yourself is knocking on your door with. So first accept. Admit defeat. My holiday is fucked. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get over it. Ugh. Damn it. I really want to have fun this holiday, but it's not happening. I'm in a process. Okay. Cool. So that takes some of the pressure out. I hope. Does it? Yeah, already. Okay, good, good. So you're feeling more acceptance of the process now? Less stupid, <laughs> less silly, That's more good. acceptance. And uh, yeah, well, it's okay. There... Yes, sky is clear. Good. And there's great wisdom in that approach. So then from this new space, how would you phrase your desire? All right. <clears throat> To every day follow my joy of that day, I guess, or my calling of that day. Doesn't need to be joy, but always be free to follow the calling of the day. Okay, well, that's beautiful. Would you say that is more or less synonymous with freedom? Huh? The freedom that you that you were talking about initially that you desire. Yeah. Because freedom doesn't mean to me not work or not having to do things, or, but always feel free to yeah, to follow my highest desire. Would you? Wonderful. As you would say, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and is anything actually stopping you from doing that out there? No, just me, just my grandma, just me, just old parents, my mom, because I already created the right environment for it. I'm I can live this life. Yes. Right, okay, but let's take it to the next level. You're saying, okay, no, nothing out there can stop me. But what can is my gremlin and my mom. Maybe they're the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's old. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's <laughs> <Both same>. old. <laughs> but yeah, it's, still, it's still placing a cause or a source outside yourself. So you're saying, in one way, in the same sentence, you're essentially saying, no, nothing out there can stop me from living aligned every day to what it would cost me, yeah. except for my gremlin and my patterns and my mom. But those three things, gremlin, patterns, and mother, are still... My mother, my mother is the pattern. Most. Sorry? My mother is uh, the pattern. Okay, the mother. Okay, I so copied it, yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's just two. Your gremlin and your mom-derived pattern. Yeah. Great. Which probably equals your grammar. So let's just call it your pattern for now. 
you see how even the idea that a pattern can stop you from change is a, a victimization choice. You're saying there's me and there's my pattern and the pattern mm -hmm. has control of my focus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes. Yes. Sweet. I understand that's what it feels like sometimes. But can we see if that's uh -huh. actually true? Like in the actuality of your here and now, is it true that your patterns determine your focus? Well, no. Okay. It's just no, because my focus, no, my focus is there. It's that my patterns just delay them. Okay. Uh, great, great, great. But here's another question to find to this. Are your patterns aware of you or your focus? Or is your <laughs> focus aware of your patterns? Oh, you make it too difficult for me. No, this is simple. Are you aware? Again. Are you aware of your patterns or are your patterns aware of you? I'm aware of my patterns. So who's the boss? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Go. Who is the boss? Me. Yeah. I'm the boss. I'm the captain of the ship. Yes. Exactly. And so see how suddenly what happens when, and we all do this, and I do this even sometimes too myself after many years. So I understand it's it's a subtle, tricky thing, but be aware of how you as awareness, which we could roughly say, okay, your focus, mm -hmm. you, your awareness dictates where you focus, your free will dictates where you focus. That's you, yeah. free will. Yeah. You determine where you focus. Will you agree, first of all? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now see that when you are attributing power to a pattern or a gremlin or a mom oh, yeah. your it's inside of that focus that you're allowing that you're choosing that you are producing that illusion of a pattern having any kind of power yeah now then yes it will appear as if that is true yeah i agree yeah. with that. Yeah. but i'm saying even when it appears that your pattern is in charge of your choices and your life and your energy flow and how you feel I'm saying that is because of your focus. Yeah. So ultimately, ultimately, you are the determiner. And you could even say, therefore, patterns do not exist. Yeah, I understand. Sweet. So if we hypothetically, which is difficult to do, granted, mm. but if we were to be aware of the fact that we are aware all the time, if we had that awareness 24-7, yeah. that we were always aware of our focus and our ability to shape the illusion, the dream, the imagination by our focus. And we're always aware of where our focus is, which we're typically not. Then if we were to always be aware of where, what we're doing with our focus, and we're always able to deliberately guide that, would you then agree that the concept of a gremlin or a pattern or a habit even would kind of dissolve that it wouldn't yeah. have meaning or power anymore? Yeah, right. So it's only when we forget about our focus that it then yeah. appears that our reality sustains us instead of the fact that our focus or our free will is sustaining our reality. Right. And it's enough even to begin to just know this, to see through it. You don't have to be 24 seven focused on your will. It'd be great if you could, but you don't have to in order to make a big shift. You can simply acknowledge to yourself, ah, wait a second, I'm gonna stop externalizing my patterns and giving that any power. I realize that's happening because of my focus. My focus is first then the gremlin appears because i'm focused in that way i don't have to be i can change that focus Support but in this in this uh time they came the patterns just um how do you call it where the outfit um yes it's shown bigger because of my focus yeah exactly exactly uh, and now now I, I choose to see my focus again. Wonderful. See, look, look at your patterns less, because yeah. the more you look at it with your focus, the more you're going to forget about your focus. Yeah. See what you're looking at. You see, it's a subtle thing. Yeah. But to, to take back power doesn't mean to change anything out there. To take back power simply means 
to remember your focus. And by stepping into that remembrance, you can now redirect it because you've freed yourself up from the object of attention. But when you're so focused on the object of attention, whether it be a pattern, a memory, an idea, whatever, something a therapist told you, whatever it is, then, then you forget yourself. And you think this thing has power, the object of attention. But when you remember your focus for that moment, the object of attention disappears and there's just a sense of I am and I have an ability to focus. That's a moment of self-recognition, of self-remembrance, of taking back your power from the objects of attention, which are the results of your prior focus. And now you have a new point of focus. <laughs> your point of power is always now. It's not in the past, it's not in the future, it's always now. The future and the past are literally created in the now by you, by your current focus. Every time you remember that, you're back in your power. Remember it more and more often, two to five seconds, sometimes a few minutes in a row as in a meditation, and you bask in the glory and the power of your focus. Not attached to any object of attention, not attached to any thought or concept or pattern, just the sense of your own power to focus. Now, you're at the steering wheel again, so you can turn. But if you forget that your hands are on the steering wheel and you're kind of like trying to change the world through your windshield, yeah, then you're not feeling like you're in control. But if you bring it back to center, to I am, to what comes before anything else, it's my awareness. It's where I focus myself. Now you're back in charge and you can steer it more easily. It's hard. It feels hard to change things when you're engaged with the topic of your life when you're engaged with the object of attention it feels much easier to make changes when your awareness is back on itself i mean ah you recognize if i don't focus there on that topic but i focus in a different frequency in a different way with a different intention different imagination i'm starting to see different things i'm starting to feel different things and i can begin to maintain that a little bit more every day and focus more and more on the imagination and on the desired state. Then the changes in your life will quite naturally manifest through action, partially, but for the most part, it will just happen. Most of it will just appear to come to you. Most of it will just appear to show up for you. And then you're taking action on those things that show up for you using your body sometimes. But that's really a minuscule portion. Of it. Most action happens without your physical body taking action. It happens as a result of your focus, of your frequency. Yeah. So just remember your power, where it is. It's not in the objects. It's not in the pattern. It has no power. Thank you. Pleasure. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy the hunt. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>